things that happen when the restoration is taking place before its position. The first is the protocol and the second is the actual restoration. Let me show you how it works. There are four things that make the protocol of restoration. The first is the mercy of God. God looks upon his body. There are scepters that he wants to give them. But nobody has the stamina to wield them. People have been killed. Churches have been burned. And God looks upon the city. He wants to put power upon men who will speak and the enemy will go back. So he will help the body by allowing cycles of restoration to take place again and again and again until the body of Christ comes to the place of full maturity, which is the place of love. So the first thing that happens in restoration is mercy. Mercy is what God does to qualify a generation even though there is a judgment that disqualifies them. Because in James 2.13, it's a mercy prevails over judgment. That's why Paul said he was a blasphemer, an injurious man. He was not qualified to do what God has called him to do. But he said mercy found him. So when God provokes restoration, he releases mercy. So even though the people he wants to use have not woken up to receive the burden of prayer, to receive the burden of giving, to receive the burden of evangelism, he will keep provoking restoration to prepare them. So they will go over the cycle again and again. What he's doing is that he doesn't want that generation to be deleted. Because in the realm where he dwells, he can cancel Israel and start a new generation with Moses. And it doesn't affect him. He can decide to be silent for 400 years. It doesn't affect him. But when he wants to use the generation, he will provoke restoration in between transition. So that that generation will qualify for what he wants to do. And the first way he does it is mercy. See, most of the times that you lie, the Holy Ghost was grieved and God still went ahead to use you. It's mercy you were operating in. That's why you were fornicated. And then you came back and prayed, the power of God moved you. You don't be deceived. If you continue there, you will be God. The reason why things are still happening is because mercy says no. Mercy is still prevailing over judgment. But if you remain there and the transition takes place, you'll be left out. So God is ordaining new prophets and then you are swindling people, taking money. God is occasioning restoration for you to repent. You are not doing it. He still needs you. But the day the transition takes place, you'll be replaced. That's why you don't have to sit there and become comfortable. And say, well, the last time I did it, nothing happened. You are in the gate of mercy. If the gate of mercy shuts, you are finished for eternity. Because the business we are talking about is not about time. It's about eternity. You know what? We are figuring, walking to the face of the earth. There is no way. You can't dodge the throne. The, the, the judgment is it. Nobody can. There was a time I was thinking. I was thinking how I can dodge the throne. Because when I check the journey of life, I say, how can somebody pass through this life and make it before this throne? So I was wondering if there's any possibility of passing by the side. The throne is, is a gate. If you don't pass through, you can't go to the other side. You can't dodge it. So long as you have taken breath, one day you will take this, this case they call body. And that day you will pass through. So don't allow your generation to transit and leave you behind. If you were counted among the apostles, anything you need to do to be part of them, make sure you do it. Don't hear later that your generation went ahead and then you sit down you are telling people that that thing that brother is doing is what I should have done. It's worse than the grave. It means you violated mercy until the transition took place. But before transition takes place, there is a gate of mercy that God opens to occasion restoration so that men who were disqualified can be accepted for the same assignment. Why transition is still pending? When you journey through mercy, God will now expose you to trials. The reason is because you took some steps and he was about to give you the authority of a businessman so that you can become the apostle in the economic world. 
He was about to give you the authority in government. He was about to give you the authority to minister from the altar. You now went and fell. Mercy now spoke and judgment was eroded and you were restored. But you will not just appear where you were. Because there was something God did to your soul before you came there. God will carry you through another trial. He will prove your heart for you to qualify for it because there must be qualification. When the spirit doesn't try you, he can't empower you. That's why even Jesus himself, who is part of the Godhead, the moment he became man, he was tried. They didn't say, no, this one is part of us. So long as you are wearing this case, the spirit must try you before he empowers you. So after mercy, there is trial. That trial is when you lo it looks as if you enter a pit and nothing is working. And then many people want to run away. If you run away, you are finished. You that was shining, your mates have gone ahead of you. That's not the problem. The problem is whether you will go at all. So God will take you back. You will pray for a blind eye. The eye will open. Nobody will hear. The next time you are going to pray, you tell your friend to carry phone and record it. Your friend will carry phone and record it. The eye will open. You will put it online and promote it. Everybody will flip through. They will invite you for family deliverance. The moment you come, you say, you are the mighty God, the great I am, all the demons will run. The power of God will deliver the family. The people will say, thank you. Nobody will give you honorarium. Because the last time money entered your hand, you went and paid for a hotel, and you crossed your leg and had fun. So this time around, you will go through that pit for a season. Because what God is doing is that he's shaping your heart. You were into politics. You had money. Everybody knew you. And then God occasions a, a season for you. It looks as if you fell into a pit. And now that you came back, even the people that were working with you before betrayed you. And then you are crying every day. What? Even this one that I paid the school fees until I made him. is a spirit manipulating them. God will take everything away until he reset your heart. And the only thing you desire is him. When you get to that point where you desire only him. Uh -huh. Something... You are, you are about to come to where you lost. The ground you lost has been recovered. Because the ground you lost is not terrestrial. It's in the heart. You lost so much ground in the heart. God wants to restore it. So he will allow you to go through the fire. He knows you will not be burned. He will allow you to go through the water. He knows you will not be drowned. But by all means you must go through. So that the, the grounds that were lost will be restored. When that happens, then God will open the third, the third gate. Which is the gate of favor. And then all of a sudden, somebody tells somebody, have you heard about Apostle Nat? Say, which one is Apostle Nat? Don't worry, just hear this. And from one recommendation, 20 doors open. And then you say, how did it happen? You were journeying. It's restoration. It's a protocol. You move from mercy to trial, from trial to favor. When you get into favor, the whole things that you were desiring before, you don't pray for them anymore. But those things now begin to look for you. And they begin to pursue you. You are looking for puppets to preach. When favor comes, every day, people keep recommending you. And you will now say, Lord Jesus, please, help me. I don't want to preach again. Because you can have meetings from January to December. You are looking for contracts. It looks as if every door was closed. They now gave one recommendation. And then you did one job. From that one job you did, no job won't stop again. And you will have job until you now start calling your apprentice and giving them different contracts. You say, this one is 10 million, it's a waste of my time. This one is 3 million, it's a waste of time. Meanwhile, two months ago, you were looking for a contract of 100,000. Because when favor comes, what happens to you is beyond what you qualify for. At that time, God has invested his credibility upon you. So when people are dealing with you, they are dealing with God. Because it is the credibility of God that now defines who you are. You now come to a place you are wondering, why? People are honoring you so much. You now feel so small. You say, I don't, I don't deserve. You are trying to package yourself. It's not the packaging. It is the credibility of the spirit that is upon you. So when the people are seeing you, they are seeing something else. Small you like this come for a meeting. Then they come with three jeeps to carry you. You now say, is it necessary? I would have come on a car. No, calm down. You are in the era of, of favor. You are in the era of favor. 
But at that time, the things you were desiring, it don't mean anything to you anymore. Your heart has been tried. When you go through favor and it still doesn't alter your disposition, then God will give you the scepter. That scepter is your enthronement. That means you are qualified to command the armies of God. Anything you say is law in the spirit. They can wake you up in the morning and you were not fasting, you were not praying. And they say there is problem. They say peace be still. Because you spoke, the, that same jealousy of God will go to work on your behalf. Even you, you will know you didn't release faith enough to handle that matter. But you have a scepter. Because he said, I the Lord, I perform the works of my servant and I confirm the counsel of my messengers. No matter how you were, anything you say must happen. All of those things is not transitional. They are just the packages that God does in transition to create a buffer so that the body of Christ will not drown. That's why you are seeing some people, things are happening. It's a move, it's a restoration. Because God has a bigger agenda. The bigger agenda of God is a transition. Transition doesn't affect men, it affects the body of Christ. But before the body of Christ comes into maturity to transit, there are certain men that God needs to create some complex spiritual algorithm around their life to be able to contend with the things happening territorially. That's the second thing. It's called restoration. And the first part of restoration is the protocol. The second part of restoration is the actual restoration. And two things happen. The first thing that happens in restoration is that God gives you speed. You may just come somewhere and pray for one barren person. Or you pray for one cripple. And that cripple is healed. And the day that cripple, crippled person was healed, the owner of TBN was there. And then now say, no, this kind of man should be on TBN. And then they put you on TBN. And then in one week, in one week, Two million people reach out to you. Out of the two million people, maybe three will give you lands and say, please take this land. <laughs> and then people will sow seed into your account until the bank will say, wait, who are you? They will froze your account and say, who are you? Now, in that same two months, your followership online have grown from 100 to 2 million. You will now tell the bank, Google my name. I don't need to come, Google. It's called speed. Because in that one month, God has changed your story. It's called speed. You will now discover that the things that took your friends five years that would have disqualified you because of jealousy was not necessary. That's why if people are prospering, pray for them to prosper more. Because their prosperity does not stop your own. You see somebody, you say he's doing well. In the last five years, everybody's about him. Wait. What will happen to you in one week can be greater than what happened to somebody in five years. But if you don't know restoration, you will waste the years of your Kairos moment by being jealous of that person. And you will disqualify yourself and or exonerate yourself from restoration. If you're, even if your younger brother is prospering, thank God for his life. Support him. Because he doesn't stop your prosperity. And when you are supporting him, don't hope he will support you. Don't hope he will remember. Forget it. Because after Joseph interpreted the dream of the butler, he forgot it. But when the day of restoration came, he said until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent for to lose him, even the ruler of the people. He made him lord of his substance and ruler of his household to bind his priests at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. In one day, he became the second in command in Egypt. The same Potiphar that he was the house boy in his house, we call him Lord. He said, The hand of God came upon Elijah, he outran the chariots of Ahab, even. To Jezreel. It's called restoration. 
If restoration doesn't take the channel of speed, there's another channel it takes. Is the realignment of your season. He said, the year the caterpillar worm have eaten, the year the palma worm have eaten, the year, all the years that you lost, a spiritual manipulation will take place. And things that should happen once in two years, all of it will happen in one week. So, so you are no longer the one moving fast. Your seasons begin to move fast. So God puts a speed. Maybe in your spiritual season, certain things happen to you every three, three years. When restoration comes, God will get those things to happen to you three times in one week or in one month. So what it means is that you walked in nine years in one month because your seasons were manipulated. It should have taken you ten years to be able to meet a man that will change your life. And God created manipulation. And in one week, somebody meets somebody that talks to somebody that talks to another person. And this is your helper. The things that he should do nine years time, he now does it now. He doesn't know why. Seasons have changed. Years that were eaten up are being restored. All of this happens in the midst of transition. You were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.